Welcome back, guys. Uh, today I thought I'd take a look at uh, Arch Anywhere. There was a suggestion made uh, in the comments section. One of our viewers uh, suggested that I take a look at Arch Anywhere. So I downloaded it. It's uh, basically an, uh, an Arch install script, very similar to uh, Architect. And I used it to do this install that you see here. Uh, it's a hard drive install. It's not virtual box. Uh, I went through the same process that I normally go through with all of the uh, distro reviews that I do. The install was flawless. Now the install is a little bit different than Architect. And from my perspective it, it seemed a little bit easier and also gave you some additional options. Um, and I won't say that Architect doesn't give you because Architect does give you the option to add custom software at the end of the install. You can type in the um, the programs that you want it to install during the um, final stages of the installation. So for example if you want um, OBS Studio as long as you've added Yawert, then it'll go in and install that. But any Pac-Man packages, such as LeafPad, if you wanted LeafPad as a text editor, or uh, any any particular uh, program that you wanted that was included in Pac-Man, uh, all you have to do in Architect is type in the name of the package, and you can string all the packages together, uh, separated by spaces, um, and it'll it'll download and install them at the tail end of the installation. Well with Arch Anywhere it does the same thing except it gives you a menu of categories. So for example if you want Shotwell or you want um, uh, GTHOM or it, it'll probably be in the graphics category and you can select it from a menu. So the install um, I would say maybe a little bit easier, a little bit simpler than Architect. Um, Architect gives you more options, but it, that can lead to a little bit more confusion. So this install went flawlessly, no problems whatsoever. Now, before I get into the install, let's just take a look at what you get. now. When I did the install, when it asks you to select a uh, desktop environment, well, the first option on the list is the Arch Anywhere XFCE desktop. You can select that and it'll basically include everything that it needs for XFCE. If you want Mate or LXDE, you, you would select it from a list. I like XFCE, so I went and st ahead and installed the XFCE Arch Anywhere desktop. So it pulled in theming, it pulled in icons, it pulled in desktop wallpaper that you see here. Uh, so it made it very easy to get an XFCE desktop up and running without selecting all of the individual components. And that makes it a little bit easier for someone who's just starting out in Arch. So while the install isn't um, something I would recommend for uh, someone who's just starting in Linux, um, if you've been using Linux for a little while, uh, I think it would be pretty intuitive and you would be able to get to where I am right now, which is an Arch Linux XFCE desktop. Now, I went ahead and built it after I booted from the install, I went ahead and added everything that I usually add. So I, my Broadcom driver is installed without a problem, my NVIDIA card, uh, OBS Studio, no issues. I hooked up my iPhone and I installed Shotwell. It recognized my iPhone, gave me access to all of my, comp um, all of my photos. So um, it, it's it's handled pretty much everything that I've thrown at it. Now, if we take a look at the menu, it's a typical XFCE menu. 
the whisker menu. I tweaked it by putting the categories on the left, but the theme is that's what you get when you select Arch XFCE Arch Anywhere Desktop. Okay, so uh, without reviewing everything, because it does come with bare bones, uh, I went ahead and added everything that I wanted to add. So it's kind of a bare bones install unless you select a bunch of packages towards the end from the uh, category menus that I explained to you earlier. Um, so everything is working fine. Um, no issues whatsoever. Uh, take a look at the Arch Anywhere website. They have it laid out very nicely. They've got some screenshots to help with the install. Um, and it is, this is the typical Arch Linux. Uh, th these are the screenshots. It's kind of similar to Architect. Now, I took some photos of screenshots just to give you an idea of the format and what you'll need to, to deal with. But um, I would pay a visit to the website first, take a look at some videos they have. Uh, take a look at the screenshots, uh, download the ISO, take it from there. Um, I do recommend it if you want to try a uh, simplified Arch Linux install. They've done a good job. So let's take a look at the uh, screenshots, the, f the photos that I took. This is the screen that you get when you first boot up. I did a 64-bit. And then, now here's where you need to pay attention. Um, if you want to, if you need to have a, a working uh, internet connection. So if you've got Wi-Fi, make sure at, down here, when you boot up the USB, you're going to be at a working prompt, a root prompt, okay? So if you want to enable Wi-Fi and select your Wi-Fi menu, you need to type in right here, Wi-Fi-menu. It will scan, find your network, give you the opportunity to enter your uh, password, and then connect to that network. So you want to do that first. You want to make sure you have internet connection. Uh, and it's once you connect to your Wi-Fi network, then it'll bring you back to the uh, inst the first install screen. So you can see here it asked me to, to select my my network, and here it asked me to select my language, and would you like to begin the install process so as you can see it is pretty intuitive it tests the connection you select your language select your location your city country Update mirror list, yes. Country code for mirror list, select yours. It will rank the mirrors. And then it starts getting into so selecting a petition. Now, if you've already got a petition uh, designated, that's what I would recommend. Get your petition designated and formatted ext4 uh, that way you can select it from the list and you won't have to do any petitioning within within the install now I chose not to install a bootloader you don't need to um, especially if you if you've got another program or another uh, install that's controlling the grub boot screen which I do then you can just bypass installing the bootloader and then 
when you boot up, go to your main uh, grub screen, uh, sign into that version of Linux, and run OS Prober and Grub Update. And then it'll appear on the list and you'll be all set. So that is the Arch Anywhere install. I recommend it. It is a nice, um, simplified um, Arch install. And uh, I found it a little bit easier than Architect. Um, but Architect offers you a few more options within the install. It, it lets you fine tune a little bit where Arch Anywhere is a little simpler. It's a terrific script for installing Arch. I highly recommend it. Uh, and I, I love using Arch Linux. So uh, it's functioning fine, guys. Um, I, as I said, I recommend it. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care.